Greetings everyone and welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to address the finish that failed last season on the cabin hatch. Once the UV polyurethane finish I used failed, seams opened up and water got in and didn't do it any favors. I also want to rebed the handrails I installed last year, as it was never really what I wanted, wasn't satisfied with it, and had a variety of problems. Last spring, I used butyl tape in the seams between the wood and the deck, and used brass screws from underneath as the handrails had always used to secure them. But the gap that was created by the flexible butyl tape and the weak mechanical connection from the brass screws meant the handrails always had a lot of play in them, and the contact point on the deck looked awful. It was a place where water could still get in, and they really weren't safe to use as reliable handholds. Time to do something about this. But there were some challenges. You've seen me in previous episodes use thickened epoxy to fill in oversized holes, then drill out the bolt holes for fittings. This seals the deck in the core and waterproofs everything. Then I bed it with butyl tape to add additional waterproofing. Now this is great for securing things like deck cleats that are solid and rigid. However, handrails being made of wood have some natural flexibility in them. Plus the screw from the bottom to hold it was not really a strong connection. So I decided first to replace the anchoring points from being inside the wood handrail sides and instead use a through bolt from inside the handrail and place a nut on the bottom to really make it solid. To do that, I drilled holes carefully for the width of the shaft of the stainless steel bolt through each connection point on the handrail. Then I drilled out another hole a little wider halfway down to accommodate the head of the bolt. This contact point for the bolt would make a very strong anchor point. The diameter of the larger bolt hole is identical to the plug cutter bit I used to cut out some teak plugs to fill in the holes to make it all watertight. These plug cutters simply drill down around an outside cutting ring, leaving an interior plug that can be separated from the wood with just a little bit of force from a screwdriver. This is an essential tool to have when you're working on boats. These plugs fit perfectly into the hole I just cut into the handrails. Next was time to clean up the deck by removing the butyl tape and drilling the deck holes a little larger for the bedding and filling compound. Now like I said before, with this situation being a little unique, I didn't just want a close fitting hole with a bolt going through epoxy lined holes. I wanted the bolt to be integrated and encased in the bedding material. So the bolts went in while the bedding and adhesive compound was still wet and cure around it to make a still somewhat flexible yet most watertight mount I can possibly make. After doing some research and seeing master shipwright Dan Shea using this product on some joints and seams for boat building projects, I decided to use Total Boat's Thixo Adhesive Sealant. It's a pre-measured, thickened epoxy that retains some flexibility after it cures. Be aware that this is a 2 to 1 epoxy, and the different epoxy and hardener compounds require two chambers in the tube. So you need a caulk gun that allows for off-center cartridges, and the tube will give you about one half of the volume of the total tube's volume in perfectly mixed epoxy. You use these special tips that mix the two parts as it exits the tube. The next step in prep was to place tape under the holes for the new bolts. I used a special kind of tape I use in filmmaking called gaffer's tape. Since it sticks extremely well to just about everything, it's very strong, yet it comes off easily and doesn't leave any adhesive behind. I placed a small hole for the bolts to punch through the tape once they were inserted and went back up top. I then painstakingly made masking cutouts for each section that comes in contact with the deck so that the handrails would seal to the deck underneath, but any squeeze out of the thick sew would not be spread out all over the rest of the deck. This was probably the most tedious part of the job. Not as much fun as it looks, but it needed to be done. Now unseal the tube and attach the mixing tip and start placing the epoxy. One thing I liked about this product right off the bat is how easy it was to use and there was no mess of mixing up epoxy. 
and the tip placed it exactly where I wanted it and it stayed there. It did not run or drip at all. I placed the Thixo in each hole, then went back and placed some more on the areas where the handrails would make contact with the deck. Moving the handrails around a bit to make sure that it was covered on the bottom, I put more Thixo in the holes I drilled in the handrails and then inserted the bolt, pushing it through gently so that the bolt went through the tape, but not hard enough to rip it off. It worked perfectly. Once I got them all in, I went below and attached some temporary washers and nuts to pull the bolts tight within the handrails and let the Thixo set up. Once on deck, I made sure the squeeze out was distributed around the base of the wood to make sure it sealed the edges to prevent water incursion. For now, it was time to let the thick silk cure and encase the bolts inside. Time to move on to the hatch cover for a bit. After thoroughly sanding off the old finish I put on there last year and cleaning up the water stained areas, it was time to add a couple of coats of Seatall Marine Natural Teak. This is a good product I found to protect the wood from water and seals it up very well. After a couple of coats on the top of the hatch, I wanted to address some things I didn't have time to do last year. The back part of the hatch that faces the front of the boat still has the open grain of the top boards exposed, and the fiberglass flange underneath is still visible. So I made a new end cap out of hard maple and got ready to use some more Thixo to both bed and seal the new woodwork to the hatch and even more waterproofing protection around some of the seams and edges. Oops, sorry, hard to starboard. Sorry about that total boat. Okay, hard to port, right side up again. I wanted to seal the seams at the front and the back with thin strips of wood held there by Thixo. But just so you know, not everything turns out perfect. As I was sanding the wood in prep for the final coats, the back strip of wood revealed a little void. I figured I'd just sand it out a little more and even it out. Turns out the void was some sort of wormhole in the wood, and sanding it out more to get rid of it only made it open up more. I decided to just stop before it got any worse and just write this off as uh, character of the wood. Uh, my boat has a lot of character, by the way. But all in all, it looks much better, and I think it'll handle the weather and UV exposure a lot better. Now after 24 hours, it was time to finish off the handrails. I came back to take off the temporary nuts and washers, and was really surprised to see that all of the bolts anchored and held really tight, so much so by the Thixo, I didn't even need to have a screwdriver on top of the bolts to keep them from turning. They were locked in place exactly the way I wanted. Next, it was time to shorten the bolts, file down the sharp edges, and clean up the threads with a die set. Put on new stainless steel washers and acorn nuts, and they were secure. Back up top, I added some more Thixo inside the holes and put the plugs in I had cut earlier. Let that set up and I came back a few hours to saw them off with a Japanese razor saw. Rough sand the plugs flush with the handrail and give a light sanding with the orbital sander with 220 grit sandpaper. Clean it up and brush on some Seatall Marine Natural Teak and a couple of coats of Seatall Marine Gloss. The new railing bedding method holds extremely tight. No give on the rails whatsoever from the deck, and the boat shook when I tried to shake the rail. Perfect. Now I feel a lot better about the handrails being secure and working properly if needed. No leaking, being a lot more maintenance free, and looking a lot better. I highly recommend doing this to any handrails if you have the same issues I did. In the next episode, I'm going to tackle the cockpit sole, again, this time finding a better way to seal up the wood once and for good 
with penetrating epoxy and UV protection, as well as some more topics to get Seahawk a few more steps to be restored. Again, all the products you see here in this video can be purchased from Total Boat and Jamestown Distributors with a discount by using the special promo code in the show notes below. And thank you to everyone who helps chip in to Patreon to make these videos possible. I am grateful for your help. I'll be back with another episode as soon as I can. Fair winds and following seas.